what's up everybody um happy friday um okay today is gonna be a very fun day for us all i'm gonna actually do two videos today one is gonna be my normal general hospital show i'm gonna normally do that but I, after I upload the General Hospital video, I will be uploading a separate video regarding One Life to Live 2.0. The And it's going to be who's staying and who's going. The point of the video is the One Life to Live video I'm going to do today. I'm going to pretty much be answering questions that a lot of you have been asking me about One Life to Live. Who do I do? I think Star is gonna stay. I'm gonna answer that question because I know for a fact what's gonna happen with her as far as one life to live. So I'm gonna answer that question. I'm gonna be answering everything. Who's staying? Who's going? My predictions for new characters. The whole nine bits. Who just signed contracts? I'll be explaining that much. So uh, let's get this episode started. Um, I'm gonna talk about Ellie Spinelli first. I'm gonna start off with them first. Um. Ellie, I feel bad for her because, you know, the paralysis and stuff. Hopefully, she's going to get her strength back in her feet and she's going to walk again. I pray that she do because I don't like storylines where people get paralyzed and stuff. As you all know, I don't like storylines like that. I really don't because it hurts to see shit like that, especially when it's a good character. When it's a bad, I don't even wish that on bad characters. Maybe Heather Weber, but that's another story. <laughs> but... I don't really wish that on anybody, especially on a show or in real life. I don't wish that on anybody. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I finish this, wait, before I even get into all this, I meant to bring up something. Somebody asked me to review Passions. You know the old soap opera on NBC called Passions? Let me make something clear. I said I can review, to you know, TV shows, soap operas, whatever. I review whatever y'all want me to review. You know that. It depends. But um, Passions, I do not review shows that are no longer on the air. Passions has been off the air since 2008, I believe. I don't review shows that are no longer on the air. The reason why is because it's pointless. Because you can't really do new episodes and everybody already know what happened. So that's why I don't do shows that are no longer on the air. Just to explain that to everybody. So I can make myself clear on what I would review and what I won't review. Just to throw that out there. So if you have any shows you want me to talk about that are soap related, teen soap related, maybe a TV sitcom or something, I'll do that. I, if I watch it, I'll do that. Or I'll start watching it. As long as it's good, but I'll review it. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Um, Yeah, I don't like people in wheelchairs. I don't like storylines like that because I just don't like seeing people like that. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't see them as helpless or anything like that because you can do things in a wheelchair that normal people do too. You can do that stuff, so, you know, but, um, Ellie Spinelli, I'm happy that they're getting back together. Here's my problem with them getting back together. Major problem. This is actually my advice to Spinelli. You know how I gave Carly advice yesterday. I'm going to give Spinelli some advice today. Spinelli. I'm talking to Spinelli here, people, in my mind. This is what I would want to say to Spinelli if I was giving him advice. Um... If he's going to get back with Ellie, if you're going to get back with Ellie, make sure this time around she has 100% of your attention. If it's not business related, I can understand that. You know what I'm saying? But she needs to have at least close to 100% of your attention. She needs to have 100% of your heart, not 50% like you did the first time when you was with her because she had 50% of his heart. Maxi had the other 50%. It don't work like that. You can't play both sides of the fence. If you're going to be with her, you need to... It's like poker. When you know in poker, when you put all your chips in, Spinelli needed to put all of himself into this relationship. No 50%. No putting half of yourself in this and half of yourself with Maxi. It ain't going to work like that because you tried it the first time and it pissed me off. But I gave you some leeway because... I like Spinelli's character. I, I love the character of Spinelli. He's funny, he's brainy, the whole bit. But my simple advice is, like, seriously, put your whole self into this relationship, not 50%. It don't work like that. If you want to be friends with Maxie, be friends with Maxie, but keep it on a friend level. You know, hanging out, going to lunch, 
whatever talk about things or whatever that's friend related not sexual not relationship not none of that talk about friendship keep it on a strictly friendly level i understand that spinelli is still you know he still loves max he still has feelings for her but you need to check that shit at the door if you're going to be with ellie again because i do not want to see her hurt she's a good woman she don't deserve that bullshit especially with the bullshit that she's dealing with now with this uh paralysis and stuff like that she don't need to be dealing with this nonsense personally you're gonna be in this relationship be in it don't be half-assed in this relationship like you was the first time leaving her on christmas eve to go hang out with maxie i'm still bitter about that because i mean come on shit like that it just pisses me off especially when it's your first christmas eve with your new girlfriend you don't go piece her out to go be with your ex i don't agree with that i don't like it and it rubbed me the wrong way so if you're gonna be in this relationship be all in it be all in just like poker throw all your chips in here don't throw five or six pieces of chips and keep the rest for maxi on the side it don't it don't work like that with me it just don't be all in um anyway i wish them the best i hope everything works out for ellie and spinelli hopefully he can get over maxi or whatever like that hopefully speaking of maxi let's move our attention to maxi I guess the storyline is officially going into the direction that we all thought it would go in. She's pregnant with Spinelli's baby. But here's the problem. She had a miscarriage with Dante and Lulu's baby, slept with Spinelli on the same fucking night, which is nasty. Disgusting. Because you don't have sex with somebody right after a miscarriage. That's nasty. And on top of that, y'all did not use a condom, obviously. That's borderline nasty. I understand Spinelli didn't know that she had a miscarriage, but it's still nasty on her part. Because she, obviously, she, the bitch should have said something. I'm just saying. Because it's, it's like a woman having sex when they're in their period. That's disgusting. Seriously. That makes you out to be like a trash bag. You know what I mean? That's nasty. And Maxie got a little bit more class than that. Get it together. That was just nasty. I'm surprised ain't nobody itching down there, if you know what I mean. Like, seriously. Um. Anyway, apparently she's pregnant. Uh, it's probably a Spinelli's baby. But here's my concern about this. Maybe the writers are trying to throw a twist in here. Maybe they're saying that the baby, she's making it seem like the baby is Spinelli's. But what if the baby is really Dante and Lulu's? Maybe she never really had a miscarriage because Dr. Britt was so thirsty that night. She kind of misdiagnosed Maxi. It happens, especially with that loser ass doctor. And then, like, it's just dumb. Like, seriously, I do not want this baby to be Spinelli and Maxie's. No. Because then the reason why I say that is because, for one, they're not ready to be parents. Two, it's going to cause more drama between him and Ellie. And I just simply said, we don't need that between them right now. No, I don't agree with this storyline. I honestly don't. It brings drama to the show, of course, and I love drama and a soap, but damn. Can y'all get original here? Because we seen this shit coming a mile away before they even had sex. I seen this shit coming. But um, anyway. Maxie, you need to just get over Spinelli. Here's my advice to Maxie. I'm gonna I'm just handing out free advice here. I need to get fucking paid. Anyway, Maxie, sweetie, sugar plum, darling, baby cakes, listen to me. I'm like the black Dr. Phil sometimes. I amaze myself. She really, really needs to leave Spinelli alone. You had your years with Spinelli. Here's the reason. I know everybody wants Maxi with Spinelli. I do too, but not right now. I think down the line. Long ways down the line. Here's why I say that. Spinelli and Maxie had plenty of chances to be together, and Maxie has blown every fucking chance. She's taken him for granted. She's used him. She's abused him, not physically, but, you know, kind of emotionally. And it's like you never appreciated him. So now that he's with another woman, that's when you want him? No, I don't think so. It's called forbidden fruit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Forbidden fruit. It's like you want what you can't have. It's like a nacho. You know what a nacho is, not a chip. It's when you see a man that belongs to someone else and that's nachos. That's what she is. Like, seriously, that's what Maxie sees. You want Spinelli because he's not yours. 
and it's that forbidden fruit. But what about if he got back with you? Who's to say that you wouldn't dog him out again like you did previously? So that's why I think he's making the right choice by being with Ellie. And Maxie needs to get over it. Focus on something else. You want it to be a surrogate, so be a surrogate. Go back to work. Try to start a career in something. Maybe start get some money from the bank or something and get your own fashion line. I wish these women would stop need. Like I said about Carly, you don't need a man to validate you. And this goes for men too. You don't need a woman to validate you either. You don't need a woman to define you. And a woman don't need no man to define them. You yourself define yourself. You define your own damn self. You don't need nobody to validate you and, de and define you. You don't need that. And that's what Maxie don't need either. Maxie needs to focus on Maxie. Stop trying to do things that you think is going to impress Spinelli and try to get him back to you. No. Be you. You're a young woman. You're beautiful. You got your whole life ahead of you. And you got a long time to be back with Spinelli down the road. Y'all don't need to be together now. Let him move on and find love somewhere else. Why are you trying to rob him of that? Just because you're trying to be selfish. You only want him because somebody else wants him. That's the only reason why. But you didn't appreciate him when you had him. You devalued him. You didn't appreciate what you had. You lost it. Now you realize what you had and you want it back. But it's a little too late for that. Move the fuck on, Maxie. Seriously, get a clue. Please. Anyway. Um AJ, Michael, Tracy, their scenes are funny as usual. Tracy is a fucking dean bat. Like seriously, girl. You say that Lucy Co is insane or whatever like that. But yet, what does that say about you? You're the one that hired her. So why wouldn't the board of directors or the other shareholders hold you responsible when, I mean, don't you think that they're going to question Tracy's insanity? You're the dumb bitch that hired her. I would question your sanity. Like, seriously, what the fuck were you thinking when you hired this broad? You're the one that hired her. So that questions your mentality, obviously. And she keep trying to gloat and all that, that she got control of ELQ. Tracy. You're the CEO. That's it. Technically, you're an employee of ELQ. You're not even a shareholder of the company. You own no shares in ELQ. None. So you're just an employee. Only reason why AJ can't fire you is because AJ owns a minority share of the company. That's the only reason why he can't fire you because he only owns 12%. He needs the other stockholders. But trust me, Tracy will be fired eventually. Hopefully. Um, Michael, this is why I like Michael, because he tries to find common ground with everybody. You know, he tries to unite everybody. And he made a good point. If you are willing to hire Lucy Coe, of all people, as co-CEO, why not hire your nephew as co-CEO? He's your nephew. He's your family. You claim you loved Alan. Why, why are you disrespecting his children, though? Like, come on. Seriously, get it together, Tracy. You preach about your father wanting this, wanting that, but yet your father, everybody knew, was all about family. All he ever cared about was the quarter main family. Everything he did was for the quarter main family. Why are you trying to do everything on your own and exclude your own damn family? This is why Edward did not leave you his ownership of ELQ because he knew you would not take care of the family. He knew this. That you would try to take ELQ and not give it to nobody else in the family. He knew that. That's why he split the shares up to his grandkids and great-grandkids. Because he knew that you never would. Duh. Tracy is so duh. Like, seriously. Just a bum bitch. Like, seriously. I can't stand her sometimes. Like, a lot of times I can't stand her. She's so rude. And then when AJ left to go see Lucy, he told Michael to cover for him. And Michael was like, I do not know how to lie. I was like, shit, you preaching to the choir. And AJ was like, with a mother like yours? <laughs> Trust me, it's in your blood. I was sitting there dying. I was like, you damn skippy. Shit, don't nobody know how to lie more than Carly do. Please, that bitch be lying through her teeth. She should get a gold medal in the lying Olympics. And then when Tracy came in, Michael definitely cannot lie. You could tell he can't lie. He was stuttering a little bit, and he was making that question 
seemed like it was a hard question. All she did was ask you where AJ was. And you took years to come up with an excuse. And then talking about he went to an AA meeting. Who the hell buying that story? I wouldn't buy it if you was Harry Belafonte. Please. Moving on. Lucy Coe and Heather fucking Weber. Oh my god. Their scenes just flabbergasted me. Like seriously. Here you got two mentally challenged people sitting in a damn dungeon of a room looking like an interrogation room or whatever talking about cosmetics. I'm like, yeah, this is like something straight out of a badass horror movie. Sitting in a, a Fern Cliff insane asylum talking about skincare products and cosmetics and all that. I'm like, Heather Weber, you're just as crazy as a dean bat. And then when they started, then when Lucy figured out who Heather really was, here they go. The claws are out in a weird way. I think if Lucy Coe does end up in Ferncliff, uh, you might want to have Heather Weber on your side because trust me, she could do more harm than she could do more good for you than harm. Because Heather Weber is a sneaky little old bitch. I don't like the chick, but she is sneaky and she is good at it. So I think you might want to have her on your side if you get admitted to that place. Like, seriously. Because you do not want Heather Weber on your bad side. You see what happened with Sam and everybody else that's been on her shit list. Olivia, Sam, you seen what happened to their asses. Um... So it's like crazy. And then when um, AJ came in trying to get Lucy to sign the paperwork to sign over her 1% to him, here she go with this vampire bullshit. I'm like, come on, girl. John McBain, he's a lot of things, but a vampire, I doubt it. Um, Lucy is fucking wacko. She's like wackadoo. Then when she left the room or whatever, Heather told me she could help AJ with ELQ. This must be the secret that Heather was keeping when she said, I know something that the quarter mains don't know. So this might be what we're about to find out that she knows. I'm curious to know, do she have any shares of ELQ that we don't know about? Maybe Heather got some stock that we don't know about. Or maybe she knows a secret about Tracy that we don't know about that she can use the blackmailer. Who knows? But I guess uh, Tuesday we're going to find out. And the reason why I say Tuesday is because if y'all didn't know, General Hospital has been preempted, so there's no episode uh, Monday. There's going to be an episode Tuesday. So we have a three-day weekend from soaps. Um, but anyway, I want to know what the secret is. I want to know what she knows that the quarter mains don't. Maybe she's a stockholder, and we don't know. But I already know some of y'all going to comment me and guess what it is, and I already know. I'm not really sure how to guess and figure out what it is. My only two options is maybe she has a stock, or she knows something about Tracy that she can blackmail it with. That's all I can say. I don't know what it is. Honestly, I do not know. This is something I just really, I, I you know, if I knew, I'd say it, but I don't know. So, and if one of y'all know what it is, do not say it in the comments because I like to be a little surprised about certain things that I don't know. I like to be a little surprised. So, please don't spoil that for me. Um, in case you're wondering why I keep holding my head out of serious, like, headache right now we partied hard last night and i have a little minor headache so anyway you know how i do partying in the middle of the week no one motherfuckers got to get up and go to work and all this that and the third what a dumbass we was but anyway it was like a big ass frat party but um anyway um the courtroom scene with todd john carly diane braxton p hart and a brig from the jamie fox show i'm gonna keep calling him braxton anyway um Todd, pleading insanity, uh, of course. Then they talking about he got PTSD or whatever. Um, Diane in the courtroom. This is why Diane is a beast. Like the way her arguments and stuff like that, I love it. Diane to me is worth every penny that you pay her. She's like the white Johnny Cochran female version. You know what I'm saying? Like she, you know, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Um. It's just like, I love me some Diane. She's the shit. But um, anyway, Carly sitting up in there and John sitting up in there next, you know, all side by side, sitting awfully close to each other. And John sitting there with that smug. I hate when John McBain has that smug look on his face. He get on my nerves like he already won the case. 
motherfucker, you ain't win shit. Cause obviously Todd ain't going to prison, you dumbass. And he plead that insanity shit. And then Carly gonna stand up talking about I object. Object to what? You ain't no lawyer. What you gonna object to? Then trying to plead with Todd to own up to what he did and admit to what he did. I'm like, okay, here's my here's my opinion about this. I feel like Todd should own up to the kidnapping or the baby switching or whatever. I think he should own up to it. But why can't he just own up to it after the charges are dropped so that way they can't arrest him and go to prison? I mean, you know, Todd is a smart guy. Like, he's not going to admit it in open court and then go to prison for the rest of his life for 20 years, 25 years. He's not going to do that. No. I admit, yeah, he does need to own up to his shit. But not at the risk of going to fucking prison. We need Todd on this show. He's funny. I know some of y'all don't like Todd, but Todd is my favorite, and I'm not changing my mind about that. So it is what it is. But I don't agree that he needs to own up to something just to go to prison. And then Carly, when he decided to still, you know, claim insanity, Carly storms out of the courtroom talking about some you're not the man that I knew. You're not the man I thought that you, that I knew. Carly, you barely knew him. You just met him less than a year ago. And already you act I just hate how Carly acts like Todd owes or something. Todd don't owe Carly nothing. Y'all barely knew each other. And then Todd told him about something he fell in love with Carly. How? How did you fall in love with Carly? Y'all just became boyfriend and girlfriend on New Year's Eve and broke up in the same fucking night. That's a record. Because they technically broke up in the same night. So I'm like, how do y'all hook up with somebody and claim to be in love when y'all hardly know each other? And then she storms out of the courtroom. John storms out after him, talking about some old man and you did this to yourself. John, shut the fuck up. Talking about Todd destroys lives. John, you've destroyed some lives in your life too. I'm talking about relationship wise, so shut the fuck up. Then you all sitting next to Carly making googly eyes at Carly. I'm like, oh, please. Carly and John, y'all deserve each other. Just leave Sam alone and watch y'all hook up. I really don't give a fuck. Now it looks like Todd Manning is going to go to Ferncliff with Lucy Coe and Heather Weber. Good luck, Todd. You're going to be in there with the crazies. Um. Anyway, I just feel like this episode was good. Luke and, um, oh, I forgot to talk about Lulu and Dante. I'm about to miss that part. I ain't really care for Lulu and Dante in Turkey. I really didn't care about it. I here's my thing about Luke, and I'm gonna say this because I know I said this before. He is too old to be doing these daredevil ass missions, going to Turkey, getting shot at and beat up. You is too old. You are 63 years old. When are you gonna sit down and relax? Damn, my God, Luke, Dante, Lulu. I really don't care if y'all have a kid at this point. I'm getting a headache with all these babies and all this, that, and the third. I, I it's, ugh, just. Whatever, God, just do something with his, with yourself. Like, get a storyline. Why don't you? <laughs> Can somebody? This is twenty thirteen. Can somebody please give them a drama? Some bring a woman into the show. Where is Padalia? Padelia, where is she at? I miss her. She was so cute. I love Padelia. Like, she was a gorgeous looking woman, and she did look better than Lulu. I must say, Dante should have hit that. I'm sorry, but he's a dumbass. Lulu, all that bitch do is complain and whine, so I don't know why he even want that chick. Ditsy ass. But anyway, um, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I will see all of y'all Tuesday. Don't forget, after I upload this video, I will be uploading One Life to Live 2.0. Who's staying? Who's going? That will be uploaded right after this episode. So I'll see y'all on Tuesday. Well, I will actually see y'all all up next, but I'll see y'all Tuesday.